There's one thing Republicans and Democrats can agree on about Michael Cohen. The man's a liar. Lying over and over and over again, and frankly, don't take my word for it. Take what the court said. Take what the Southern District of New York said. Cohen did crimes that were marked by a pattern of deception and that permeated his professional life. These crimes were distinct in their harms, but bear a common set of circumstances. They each involved deception and were each motivated by personal greed and ambition. Michael Cohen seems to think of himself as a good person. I am the person that they call at 3 a.m. if they needed help. Elijah Cummings seems to have sympathy for the man. Sounds to me like you want to make sure that our democracy stays intact. But Michael Cohen is clearly a liar. He pled guilty in November of 2018 for lying to Congress back in 2017 over the proposed Moscow Trump Tower deal. This guilty plea followed eight prior guilty pleas in August of that year regarding other dishonest acts, lying to a financial institution, campaign finance violations, and five counts of tax evasion. Some, but not all, of these charges related to the notorious Individual One. Who is Individual One? Well, court documents gave us this clue. On approximately June 16, 2015, Individual One, for whom Cohen worked at the time, began an ultimately successful campaign for President of the United States. Of course, that could really be anyone, but Michael Cohen shocked us with his testimony before Congress. And for the record, Individual Number One is President Donald J. Trump. Anyway, with Cohen's history of lying, how can anyone trust anything he presented to Congress in his most recent testimony? Well, the answer to that depends on an issue where Democrats and Republicans do not seem to be in such agreement. We all may agree that Cohen is a liar, but different political camps seem to have very different answers to this question. What kind of liar is he? The last time I appeared before Congress, I came to protect Mr. Trump. Today, I am here to tell the truth about Mr. Trump. Mr. Cohen, you called Donald Trump a cheat in your opening testimony. Uh, what would you call yourself? A fool. You calling, okay, well, no comment on that. Let's divide the general category of liars into two groups. There are pathological liars, liars who lie arbitrarily, reflexively, and habitually without any good reason. These are the types of people who have no respect whatsoever for the truth. Denying the truth is a matter of course. They'll say things that are obviously untrue even if it does not serve their practical interests, and even if they know they will very likely be caught in their lies. The other far more common form of liar is the situational liar. This type of liar lies only for specific reasons. They lie to protect their practical interests or their pride. When they believe the truth serves them just as well, that's what they tell. The situational liar, unlike the arbitrary pathological liar, has respect for the truth despite their willingness to defy it if a lie would suit their interests. They value and prefer honesty, but are also willing to be dishonest in certain circumstances. Throughout the hearing, Republicans seem to point out again and again that Cohen was a liar, implicitly and sometimes explicitly to discredit his current testimony. This suggests that their version of Michael Cohen is a pathological liar who can never be trusted. Lying to Congress. Lying to Congress. Lying to Congress. Intricate, elaborate lies. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Certainly, there were instances throughout this very hearing where Michael Cohen was very likely being less than truthful. For example, when he was asked what changed his mind, what turned him against Donald Trump and towards telling the truth. There's a recurring refrain in your testimony that says, and yet I continued to work for him, but at some point you changed. What was the breaking point? at which you decided to start telling the truth. This was his answer. There are several factors. Helsinki, Charlottesville, watching the daily destruction of our civility to one another. It's very hard to believe this to be the case. Cohen demonstrated loyalty to Trump throughout his tenure as his personal lawyer. If Cohen's own testimony is to believed, he remained loyal despite extremely destructive behavior. And he told me, that black people would never vote for him because they were too stupid. And yet, 
I continue to work for him. By my estimation, the turning point for Cohen was obviously April of 2018. This was when the FBI raided his office. Law enforcement had his records, he was arrested, indicted, and facing criminal charges. His interests then dramatically shifted since his lies, which contradicted his own records, would not be likely to be believed. This is when he seemed to turn around on Donald Trump. Prior to this point, I see no evidence of disloyalty to Trump whatsoever. The fact that a shift in interests and circumstances seemed to change his behavior shows that he was willing to lie to Congress again when he said that it was about trying to do the right thing. But it's also evidence that he is not a pathological liar, he's a circumstantial liar. Indeed, in every instance of Cohen lying that Republicans pointed to throughout the hearing, Cohen's personal interests were always at stake. For example, the contentious line of questioning James Cormer brought up. To uh, try to determine your credibility here today, I just wanted to ask you a couple of real estate transaction questions just to see how, in fact, you, you operate. According to the Southern District of New York prosecutors, you lied to banks to secure loans by falsely stating the amount of debt you were carrying. Mr. Cohen, my question to you, was it Donald Trump's fault that you knowingly committed a crime of deception to defraud a bank? But you understand that when you fail to disclose liabilities, especially $20 million in liabilities, that is, in fact, fraud. Here, Cormer is pointing out that Cohen lied to a financial institution, something Cohen indeed has pled guilty to, but in action he clearly did out of personal self-interest. So if Cohen is, as I suspect, not a pathological liar, but a circumstantial one, then there are things he says that might be believed. In particular, things he says and presents that are not serving his direct personal interest. For example, when Michael pointed out experiences of Trump being more racist in private, He once asked me if I could name a country run by a black person that wasn't a shithole. And while we were once driving through a struggling neighborhood in Chicago, he commented that only black people could live that way. And he told me that black people would never vote for him because they were too stupid. And yet, I continued to work for him. Making this claim does not serve Cohen's self-interest. It besmirches his already besmirched character. So if he is indeed only a circumstantial liar, it's almost certainly true. A more serious instance of likely honesty is not in the form of verbal testimony, but in documentary evidence he presented. For example, this. The check he alleges Trump gave him in order to repay the Stormy Daniels hush money. It serves no particular interest of Cohen's to release this. It is, in fact, further evidence of his involvement in paying hush money as an unlawful, in-kind contribution to Trump's campaign. Indeed, no Republican in the hearing questioned this evidence, as Lawrence O'Donnell joyfully indicated on his show on MSNBC. Not one Republican member of the committee dared to do that. Not one of them went after that check. Not one Republican member of the committee tried to defuse that bomb for Donald Trump. They left the smoking gun untouched in their cross-examination of Michael Cohen. Now, before we celebrate too much, I do believe this evidence should be thoroughly examined by experts to certify that it is authentic. What's going on? Why am I losing this? But if it is, that's a big problem for Donald Trump. It certainly indicates that he was lying when he said, But that's of course already been shown to be untruthful by the audio recording Cohen released several months ago. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and, I've spoken, to and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes. Um, and it's all the stuff, all the stuff, because you know you never know where that company, no, you never know where he's going to be. Gets it, but Correct. So I'm I'm all over that, and I spoke to Alan about it. When it comes time for the financing, which will be listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So pay, okay. no, 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 no. I got no, no, no. Now it should be noted that even if the hush money was paid. Some legal experts are saying that he is not in legal jeopardy unless he knew he was violating campaign finance law. As a former Obama Justice Department official noted, I don't think we know yet that prosecutors have concluded Trump violated campaign finance law, given that Trump would have to know that his conduct was illegal. God damn it. But there's other damning evidence. 
There were in fact two $35,000 checks and a bank statement indicating a wire transfer of $131,000. There are financial records indicating that Trump inflated his net worth as a way to benefit himself and deflating his net worth as a way of avoiding paying taxes. That too would be a crime. And there are the tweets Cohen saved of Trump threatening him on Twitter. These threats, if interpreted as such, may constitute witness tampering, yet another crime the president may have committed. Now again, don't get ahead of yourself. Get. For any of this evidence to be valuable, it must be validated, and any idea that it's evidence of a crime is subject to legal interpretation. You have insanity in my earpiece. Still, the evidence presented paints a picture of thorough dishonesty. Even the more trivial matter of Trump allegedly paying a guy to inflate the price of his portrait at an auction, or the threatening letters Cohen wrote to academic institutions, allegedly at Trump's behest, to prevent them from releasing his grades or SAT scores, this despite Trump's frequent assertion that he got really good grades. I went to an Ivy League college, uh, I was a nice student, I did very well. These latter things don't, as far as I can tell, implicate him in any kind of crime. But it does make one wonder, what kind of liar is he? I did the same thing that you're doing now for 10 years. And I can only warn people, the more people that follow Mr. Trump, as I did blindly, are going to suffer the same consequences that I'm suffering. How do you say this guy's last name? 